Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to change the oil using the Fumoto ball valve on a 2011 to 2016 uh, first gen 3.5 EcoBoost. If you have not changed the oil on your 3.5 EcoBoost yet and it's your first time, that's why you're watching this video, you're going to want to keep watching the video and watch it because if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to make a mess. And also if you have changed it, you know what I'm talking about and this makes it a lot easier. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. Um, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below on where I got it from. I got it right from Fumoto Valve website. Um, so let's get started. This bar right here, guys, it's plastic, but there's metal underneath, so you can step right on that to uh, get into the engine bay and or obviously the uh, wheel well. Take your oil cap off. I just like to set it in there like that so that can vent. And now we're gonna go ahead on the bottom and I'll show you that uh, Fumoto valve. 5 uh inch diameter hose to put on the Fumoto valve. Um, it's about a foot long. Got this here to just show you guys. You probably won't need it a foot long or might not need a hose at all, but I have these aftermarket skid plates that I put on there and that's because my truck didn't have any and I don't really do much off-roading but I just wanted something on there in case I did that I didn't have to worry about bottoming, bottoming out. So I opted to get this clip fork guys that goes on the ring just so it can't turn. Um, even though I had these skid plates I'm not really worried about it. I've had this uh, valve on there for about a year and have had no leakage issues or anything whatsoever And it's kind of pretty fail safe because all it is is a ball valve with a spring in there So, you know, there's no o-rings or anything in it that I th think that can fail and leak So like I said, I got this hose so I can make it past my skid plates here Just put that on there And just open it up There we go Okay, so the problem with the EcoBoost and why you're gonna wanna do this to yours if you you know you haven't already is see how it's, you could say, uh, side mounted on the engine block there. Um, but what happens is, is especially if you're doing this on the ground like uh, I have to, it when you pop that drain valve open, or plug, I mean, I'm sorry, it shoots out over to the tire it will literally hit the sidewall of your tire here. So if you don't have a Fumoto valve, um, just put your oil pan right butt up next to this tire. Um, it still might hit the tire and leak on your driveway or wherever you're working, so be ready for that. I want if you're on a lift, it'll come down about like right here. Um, also too, if you're on the slightest incline, uh, it will hit the sway bar and just drip everywhere from that. So on the driver's side, you have three of these quarter turn plastic clips, whatever you want to call them, to get access up to the filter. You're probably going to need your left hand, guys, if you're doing it on the ground. Um, also, this front drain, you could say pan for the oil filter. If the vehicle is uh, downward at all, meaning nose down on an incline, uh, it will that's the only way it's going to come from there partially um, If it's level and tilting back a little bit like if you have it on ramps um, You're gonna want to take off this right here. I learned that way also the Hard way as well after dealing with that situation when I first ever did my oil change uh, I loosened up the oil filter was taking it off I'm like, where the heck's the oil? And I had the oil pan right here ready for it to drain out of there. And next thing I know, I just see all from my rear, you could say, uh, drip pan um, oil just all over the place. So don't make that mistake. Just take your, if, if the truck's level and or tilted back a little bit, you can take your oil pan and just set it right underneath this square hole. You want the first square hole towards the driver's side, not the passenger side. Also, when you're getting the oil filter off um, and on, you're gonna wanna peek your head next to the tire here and look in through here 
at the oil filter. Also guys, you're gonna wanna look um, through here as well, getting the oil filter back on because trying to fish it through here or looking through up top just doesn't work, trying to find the threads and obviously you don't wanna strip it. So just, uh, you know, look through here. Um, I'll show you guys that. Okay, now that this is done guys, let's pull your hose off. You can leave that in the pan for now. Shut the valve. And like I said, I got the clip that goes on there. While I was recording the oil filter process, I forgot to grab a sample for my lab results because I've been getting um, oil samples done of this truck to find out what the best oil is for it. So I will leave that at the end of the video, the picture of my oil analyst. And if you guys want to see more to more down the road, um, subscribe to my channel. All right, so just take your oil pan and we're gonna put it at that hole. But normally I don't get any oil on me here, so. Just let that drain a little bit. Then we'll put the new oil filter on. And guys, when you fill, if you fill your oil filter up before you put it on, uh, you can really only fill it halfway because, like I said, it goes horizontally. Um, make sure that you know your ring came off on the old filter. I already did that. Also, guys, I would use only the Motorcraft oil filters. Uh, people that have eco had ha have had EcoBoost problems. Um, a lot of them were not using the Motorcraft filter. I don't know why. If if there's something special about them um, i believe something with the drain valve um for the three five first gen eco boost it's fl 500 s hold on that's upside down there you go fl 500 s that's going to be different for the 2.7 but this is a steel body f-150 so if you have a steel body uh eco boost you don't have to worry about that and you guys should always put oil in your oil filter before putting it on because the start of an engine is when most of the wear occurs. Like I showed you, just look through the, um, you could say peephole that I showed you about to see it and you'll get it on there easily. If you don't, you're gonna be fiddling with it, trying to put it on and you chance cross threading it. So just look through the uh, wheel well here like I showed you. Alrighty guys, just put this back on. Just like that. And this one. Let's see. You gotta see where the grooves are. And turns clockwise to uh, get back on. I don't even bother cleaning it, guys, because it's just over time oil is gonna drip on. It's just gonna get dirty again. Like I said, guys, I'm doing a test on. Uh, what's better for the EcoBoost, and I will leave that um, video to come uh, probably after testing this oil. And yes, guys, I like to not use funnels a lot. Uh, I'm pretty good with my hands to just doing it this way. This engine takes six quarts. All right. it up if you guys do spill it you're gonna want to clean up as much as you can because the turbos are right there and those run pretty hot you don't want to start a fire I like to start it up watch that oil pressure gauge there we go okay guys so resetting the oil light on here um, when I first bought my truck, I noticed right here, go down to oil life, okay. Notice when I first reset it, that you can set it to all these percents. And I was like, why the heck would anyone want to do that? Well, each 10% is roughly a thousand miles, give or take. So I set mine to 40%, um, which, uh, which equals out about, um, let's see here, equals out about 
um, 100 hours, 90 to like 105 hours, and between 3,000 to 3,700 miles at 40%. That's for me. Uh, I don't really tow that much. In the summer I do, but not in the winter, and it's only on weekends. And I always set my trip B when I do my oil change. That's just personal preference, so just hold it down. So I like to change my oil about every 100 hours. Go back to settings, go to vehicle, and I just set it to 40 the other day because it went off and I didn't want to see it every time I started my truck. So I set it back to 40%. So then I know when that comes up, when I set it at 40, that I'm about almost 100 hours to 3,000 miles. You definitely want to keep up on the oil on the EcoBoost, guys. As you can see, I have almost 130 on mine and have had no mechanical issues whatsoever. Um, and that's tuned. Um, I've been tuned about... Um, I'd say 33, 35,000 miles um, with Unleashed Tunes. Uh, and as you can see, let's see, my fuel economy on this trip is 16 miles to the gallon and I'm, I don't drive lightly. If I drive uh, very conservatively, I can average, you know, 17, 17 and a half in, in the winter time and about 19, 19 and a half in the summer time. So I hope you like this video guys um, and it saves you a mess the first time doing it if you're doing it your first time or just watching this video because of the Fumoto valve um, on a 3.5 EcoBoost. Like I said, I'm going to leave the oil analyst that I've been getting done the past like two years in the description below and if you'd like to see more down the road, I'm going to do eventually a full report on what I think my personal preference is the best oil for the EcoBoost. So if you guys want to follow along with that, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, that'll probably be in a few months in the spring because I've got quite a couple oil analysts done of kind of, you know, pretty good reputable oils out there of um, Penn's Oil, Mobile, Castrol, um, and different weights. So I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching and I hope the video helps.